Welcome to Donsky Tech. I'm going to show you my new project called the Raspberry Pi Pico W DMA280 Weather Station Dashboard. As you can see in here, this is the Weather Station Dashboard that I have created that will show you the sensor readings coming from my BME 280 sensor. At the top of my page, are the current values of the temperature, humidity, pressure, and the relative altitude. At the rightmost part of the page are the gauge chart representation of my readings. The gauge chart will tell you if the current readings exceeds a particular threshold. So for example in here, my threshold is 30 degrees Celsius and as you can see the current temperature is 25 so the delta value is less than minus 4.9. On the left hand side of my screen is the historical line chart of sensor readings. I am saving the last 12 sensor readings and displaying them as line charts. The user interface automatically up updates to retrieve the latest sensor readings. So, for example here, I have here my Raspberry Pi Pico. W and my BME 280 sensors. If I try to touch this BME 280 sensor with my finger, then I am assuming that the temperature should change. So let's try. Right now the temperature is 25.2. Now it becomes 27. 27.4. Notice that the temperature has now changed and it has gone up. If I remove my finger, then I am assuming that, that it should go down. So I remove my index finger and as you can see, the temperature indeed went down. I use MicroPython in developing the BME280 weather station project and have used the MicroDot web server framework. Would you like to know how I did this? Then let's start exploring. Before we start, let's discuss a little bit about what the BME280 sensor is. This sensor was developed by Bosch for mobile and wearable devices applications. It is capable of retrieving the temperature, humidity, pressure, and relative altitude with high accuracy. This table here lists some of the important specifications of this sensor. The BME280 module can use SPI or I2C communication. In my case in here, I have an I2C module, so the pinout is the usual SDA and SEL pin plus the power pins, BCC and ground. For the wiring and each schematic, I use my Raspberry Pi Pico W microcontroller and I'm using the standard I2C channel 0 GPIO pins, which are the GPIO0 and GPIO1 assigned as the SEL and the SDA pins. The following is the overall design of my Raspberry Pi Pico W BME Weather Station dashboard. I have created a micro dot web server inside my Raspberry Pi Pico W that will create a web application which is my weather station dashboard. The weather station dashboard periodically requests sensor readings through HTTP call and when the web server receives this request then it communicates with the BME280 sensor through my Raspberry Pi Pico W. Then my BME280 sensor will return back the sensor reading into, into my microdot web server and my microdot web server will then forward it back into my web application. The weather station dashboard in turn updates its user interface to show the latest sensor readings. These are the parts of my weather station dashboard.
The important parts are the boxes, which displays the latest values of the temperature, humidity, pressure, and altitude. The gauge charts and the line charts are in here. The sidebars just displays my name here. Let us now discuss some code. First, how do we read the BME280 sensor readings? To read the BME280 sensor readings, then we use a library called the MicroPython BME280 library. The code is really simple. As we just declare an instance of an I2C class, passing in the channel, which in this case is 0, and my SCL and SDA pins. Next, we create an instance of a BME280 class and we pass in the previous I2C object that we created earlier. Lastly, we call the BME.values to retrieve the sensor readings. So, let's try running this one. As you can see, the, when calling the BME.values, then it will return the following sensor readings. I have here the temperature at 25.7 degrees Celsius, the, the 1,002.7 pressure, and the 40.61% relative humidity. That is how simple it is to communicate with this sensor. Now, we're going to discuss some of the important parts of my micro.dot web server. The first one is the BME module.py. The BME underscore module.py is the representation of my BME280 sensor. As you can see, I have a class here named BME280 module, which has a constructor that requires the I2C channel ID, the SEL pin, and the SDA pin. It then creates the same code that we have done earlier wherein we create an I2C class and the BME280 class also. The method get sensor reading is where we retrieve the readings from our BME280 by calling the same values which is the BME.values. The additional code in here is called the altitude approximation using this formula. If we know the Sea level pressure at the current time, like in this case, I am hard coding the value that the value is 1013.25. Then we can guess the, al the relative altitude where we are right now. The formula here was taken from the adapt root code that I have seen, so I just copied it here. Once we know this altitude value, then we will just return everything as a Python tuple. The other code is the boot.py. The boot.py will just connect our Raspberry Pi Pico W to our Wi-Fi network. Just make sure to change these lines to match your network configuration. This file will get executed every time our Pico W is restarted. The main.py is where we create our micro.web server. We declare our micro dot specific packages here, including our BME280 module class. I have here the pins that we will use and the creation of the micro dot application. The BME280 module is initialized at this point also. The important part of this file is our routes, which will respond to requests coming from our browser or our BME280 weather station dashboard. First, the index or the root route will serve our index.html page. Next, the slash sensor readings route will read the values from our BME280 sensor. As you can see in here, I have here the BME module that I created earlier and then it just calls the method get sensor readings. After getting the sensor readings, then we return a JSON object back to the calling client. The shutdown and the static routes are just used to shut down our micro dot application and serve our CSS JavaScript files. The, the part of the code here will just execute our micro dot application by calling the app.run. When the app.run 
it finished running, then it will create a web server at port 5000. The IP address, this is my IP address, and the port is defaulted to 5000. The index.html, which is in the template folder, contains the HTML elements for our projects and is used to display the sensor reading. Let's scan the important parts in here. In the head section, I am importing the box icon and the plotly.js, which I use to display graphs and charts. The sidebar logo, which in this case is here, just displays my logo name and my name, which is Donskitech. The home section or home content is where I create the boxes. So this is the boxes for the temperature, the humidity, the pressure, and the altitude. So these are what I call as the boxes. The history chart contains the HTML divs that will display my line chart. And the gauge chart, gauge list in here will display the, my gauge chart. As you can see, they are just deep HTML deep elements and it is the job of the plotly.js JavaScript library to populate it with chart and text. The style.css, which is in my static folder in here, is our cascading style sheet file. It contains the classes will beautify our page. I cannot discuss so much about how CSS works because that is a big topic on its own. But one thing I can say to learn how it works is to comment everything out and then I comment it one by one starting from the top. There you would see the impact of such styling on our index.html page. The last and most important file is the main.js file. In the main.js file, it initializes all the configurations for our graphs. So as you can see here, there is a configuration for our history, which is the trace for pressure, temperature, and altitude, and some layout variables also. So these are the configurations that we are going to call to create our graph by calling the API function plotly.newplot. As you can see, I'm just passing the configurations that I have created earlier so that it will draw the initial layout of our graph. The same also with the gauge data in here. These are the gauge information or gauge configurations needed to draw our gauge chart, which I, as I have mentioned is I'm using the plotly.new plot also. The array variables that you are seeing in here will hold the last 12 sensor readings for each data coming from the BME280 sensors. I am limiting the value to 12 so that I will not show so much information to my user. Now, the function update sensor reading is an important function. This will call our route slash sensor readings. As you can see, there is a slash sensor readings in here which will call our initial route, which is the slash sensor reading. What this function will do is that it will parse the JSON response, and then after parsing the JSON response and using the data retrieved, so for example, we are able to retrieve the temperature, humidity, pressure, and altitude, then we can now update our user interface. As you can see, there is a function here called update boxes, which will update our boxes. And then there is an update gauge and there is an update chart in here. Using the data that comes from our web server, then we are able to update the different parts of our application by using the sub functions. So this is the example of the update boxes. As you can see, it updates the information in my boxes by changing the inner HTML of my HTML component. The gauge, update gauge, we just call the plotly that update. And the update chart basically we just call the plotly that update line chart. The last function that you're seeing here is what we use to automatically trigger a refresh of our page every three seconds. We have set a loop function in here that will call our update sensor readings for every 3,000 3, milliseconds or three seconds. The micro dot that you're seeing here are just micro dot specific files. 
which I just copied from the micro.github micro repository. Now, to deploy this project, you just first need to install the following libraries, which is the U template and the microton, micropython bme 280 and then after installing the library, then the next thing you will do is just to copy everything in here and then upload it into the file system of our Raspberry Pi Pico W. That is how our, our project works. If there are any questions or comments, then please ask this in the companion write-up of this video. The companion write-up code and everything are in the description of this video. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!